Returning to Katahdin, an Appalachian Trail dream. Have you ever dreamt of hiking the AT? Bruce Matson did, so we're going to follow him every step of the way. Welcome back to Returning to Katahdin, an Appalachian Trail Dream, sponsored by our friends at Trailtopia. We're already up to episode number 11 on Monday the 15th of January. Bruce actually hits the trail on February the 24th, so we're really counting down now. By my math, Bruce is down to his last 40 days as a civilised human being. From that day on, he'll become a feral creature, carrying his home on his back and eating disgusting quantities of relatively disgusting food. The wonderful thing about this feral lifestyle, for a lifestyle is what it certainly is, is that you quickly become to embrace it, far faster than you ever would have imagined. The comforts of home are simply not available, so you find comfort in the simplest of things. Sitting around a campfire, sitting on a log, listening to the sound of birds in the forest, a shared meal at a picnic table with ten strangers getting to know one another. And of course, the relentless farting and belching going on all night inside the shelters. This is probably a very good reason to camp several yards away from most shelters. Many of you seem to get a big kick out of last week's favourite song shows. But this week, we're back to business. With Bruce telling us about his choices for the big three. Namely, his backpack, his tent and sleeping bag. Before we get to Bruce, I fancy a bit of breakfast. Don't you? When I was hiking... I'd wake up to my alarm, deflate my air pad and contemplate my blah breakfast. Every morning I poured water into those different coloured paper bags, scrunched around the ingredients, not one of which had any association with fruit, and then eat that soulless gunk. I'd then find unhydrated powder and sugar in the crevices of the bag. Trautopia's blueberry oatmeal is a bit of a novelty, because it actually has real blueberries. Who'd have thunk? No gunk. It tastes great, the bag design ensures complete hydration and it really sets you up for the day. Try Trautopia Adventure Food, the best of home cooking away from home. And we're back. Now that we're getting so close to Bruce's start date, he's refining and concluding his choices. The big three have been pretty much tied down for some time, so that's where we're going to begin. Here is Bruce. Okay, we're back on with Bruce uh, this week. Hi, how are you, Bruce? All right? Yep, uh, doing really well, thanks. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. Um, we're going to talk today about your big three. For those people who don't know what the big three are, um, they are the tent, the it's basically the sleeping, the sleeping arrangements, and <laughs> it's the sleeping arrangements and the backpack. So um, let's start with your tent. Tent. Did you ever consider going for a hammock, or was it always going to be a tent? Yeah, good question. Um, I I never really thought seriously about a hammock, um, and you know, for someone who does quite a bit of planning, you would have thought I would have tried that out. Of course, well. but uh, <laughs> the concept never jumped out at me. In some of the conversations I had, people who had trouble or negative reactions to sleeping in a hammock, it kind of resonated with me that I wouldn't like it. And so I immediately, you know, when I got back into doing this, I did pick a tent. I did pick a tent with a through hike in mind, and um, I ended up picking the one I did. And I really, really like it. And uh, I still think I primarily am interested in having what I call this sealed environment that I get to escape <laughs> into once a night. Yeah, do you know, and you've made a means, lot of jokes over time yeah. about how uh, how irrational it is to think <laughs> yes. about the safety of that. But um, I, I have, I think we probably are very like minded about that. Yeah, I, I think the 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 hammocks. I've I've seen um, several people review them, and one of the things it's always when you have a really really cold night, unless you really are wrapped up properly, you can have a really cold bottom of your body, can't you? So it, it, I must admit, it doesn't really appeal to me, I must say. Yeah, I think that if you're in a cooler weather, I've noticed that you need an underquilt. Yeah. And um, and you don't quite have that complete environment that, that I like. And while I think there are some lighter weight ones, there my research suggests that there's not a big weight savings by going with a hammock. 
No, no. But I, I, I'm with you, definitely. I, I think this thing of zipping yourself in at night is a pretty damn good thing. I really like it being zipped into a tent. So how many did you look at? And uh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, first thing I need to ask actually is, are, are your tent, your backpack and your sleeping bag all new? Or are they things you've had some time? Uh, none of them are new. Okay. It's interesting. Uh, when I started getting back into this three years ago and started doing some hikes, some overnights, I was already thinking about and planning for the through hike. So I made choices initially that I thought would be through hike choices. Uh-huh. So, for instance, my tent is the Copper Spur, Big Agnes Copper Spur UL2. Yeah. And I will tell you a little story about that because I think it'll be interesting yeah. to your listeners. So, for a, a double walled, lightweight tent, uh, there isn't much out there that is lighter than the Copper Spur. But there was, and I think there still is, at least one Big Agnes tent that's lighter, and that's called the Fly Creek. Right. So I was thinking I should save every ounce I could. I think there was only about a five or six ounce difference between the Fly Creek and the Copper Spur. Right. So I was leaning toward just going with the lighter tent. And I had a nice conversation with an REI employee one time who said, great choice, Fly Creek is excellent backpacking, good for a through hike. He said, you know, one thing to think about, uh, he said, you're not as young as you used to be. <laughs> And Gosh. you think you might like it that you can get into the tent without always crawling on your belly. Hmm. And he did a really good job of pointing out to me that the Fly Creek, again, great tent, but very hard to put yourself in there without really being on your belly. And I thought that was a great observation. <laughs> and then when I looked more and more at the Copper Spur, it has entrance on two sides, yes. and it has, for again, for its weight, has an unusually high volume uh, headroom. And you literally can take a step from the outside, step into the tent, duck down, squat down, put your other foot into the tent, and literally get into the tent in a squatting position, uh, but you're not crawling on the ground like you might have to with a lot of tents that uh, are set up a little lower. So... I think that was an interesting lesson, and I really appreciated the advice. And I think for the listeners who are doing some planning, um, it's a great resource out there to have these kind of conversations. Yeah. There are really knowledgeable people out there. Definitely, definitely. So um, one of the things I say about it, I'm, I'm look, I've looked at the various re- reviews. It says it's got, got above average space-to-weight ratio because it's quite big. It says it's – is it for two people? Is it a two-person tent? Yes, and it, technically, I got the UL too. All right, okay. But it's it to me, it's nice for one. But it, there's my wife's probably the only one who could ever sleep in there with me, <laughs> <laughs> apart from the snoring, of course. <laughs> well, that aside, that, that would chase her out. But yeah, you know, the idea of two average sized people getting in there, it would be very snug. It would it be uh, very very snug. So uh, I think it's the amount of time I expect to be using it. And the difference between UL1 and UL2 for the weight, um, I just, uh, it's not even a hard decision for me to go with the UL2. It's, to me, it's a nice size one person tent. Yeah, well, I, I actually, I, I know that I'm, I'm looking at the various uh, things that I, review sites I look at, and it says um, the top tent double rainbow was a relatively similar sort of um, um, scoring as well and I, I went for the top 10 rainbow and I was so wish I got the double rainbow I think it was three ounces difference for some stupid reason <laughs> for the sake of three ounces I went for the single rainbow as opposed to the double and I always needed more space and so you, you can never have enough space in the tent as far as I'm concerned and one thing it says here is that it's got it's quite a low profile uh, end and so it makes it very strong in winds and of course you're going quite early you're going sort of um uh, late february aren't you so that might be yeah. quite a useful thing to have as well I, th- I think you're absolutely right um i'm really not you know i've probably taken six trips with it um i'm a big fan big fan of, of the tent i got no reservations about uh that being a good choice okay so you've had that one for how long I guess three years. All right. So did you look at any others, or did you just decide just to stay with that one and um, and no, no further thought? Yeah, I looked at a lot. 
Who should you? But did. I didn't purchase <laughs> any, any other, and I decided to purchase this one, and it turned out to be a good choice. Cool. That said, if it didn't turn out to be a good choice, for spending the amount of time in the tent and for a chance of a lifetime, you know, I probably, you know, you never like to buy something that's not going to be as useful, but I probably would invest it in the right tent uh, because of the, you know, the impact I think it's going to have on the Absolutely. ultimate success of the trip. I totally agree with you, Bruce. Being comfortable, that those those moments when you, you know, you've had a tough day and you've enjoyed the evening, but it's really nice to get <laughs> to crawl into your tent at night uh, and uh, just just uh, be comfortable in there and have enough room, room to sit up and things like that. So what about the backpack then? I know that you um, have gone for a 65 litre pack and um, do you need one as big as that? Because I carried about 40 pounds. You're going to be carrying quite a bit less than 40 than forty pounds with you. Um, why did you go for such a large pack? A relatively large pack. Sure. Um, so I'm taking the Osprey Atmos AG pack yep. and it comes in a 50 litre and a 65 litre pack. The right. size. Yeah. And so I went and looked carefully at the difference in the two packs yep. because I had been told that you know, go with a smaller leader pack because you won't fill it as much and you'll keep your weight down. And I wanted to see what I was getting or not getting depending on which pack I bought. Yeah. And I was somewhat surprised to find out that the difference is really just additional material that is added to the top of the pack right. so that you can expand the pack upwards as you fill it. Yeah. And you can still, you know, just kind of seal it off with the, the tie it off uh, device at the top. Sure. So I decided that I think I have enough discipline in doing things the way I want to do them that I would take what might be a weight penalty of just an ounce or two <laughs> of that extra extra material and give me the flexibility where I might need it on those few days where maybe I do have to carry five or six days of food where I need to expand the pack enough to accommodate that. Or there might be some other reason I want to accommodate the size of the pack. So there's a fairly simple difference between the two. Uh, So, uh, Again, yeah, doesn't doesn't make that big a difference, and they do have better to have more space than less space because you can't, you know, if you haven't got enough space for everything, then you're in real real trouble, aren't you? Yeah, so why not um, to keep that optionality uh, out there? Some people even remove the brain from this pack. This pack has you know a section that folds over yeah. and locks down, yeah. and and I think a lot of people refer to that as a brain, and the brain itself has a couple of pockets in it. Yeah. And when you have pockets and extra zippers, that adds weight. And some people will remove that part, that brain, just to save weight. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do that. Again, I like having, and one of the things about the Atmos we haven't talked about, which I like and is sort of anti-lightweight, super lightweight, is it has a few pockets, separate places to put things. It's more than just a big sack. You know what? You know what? you're really going to appreciate that. You will really appreciate having those extra pockets. I I I had them on my pack as well, which I loved my pack as a Gregory, and to have pockets in loads of different places was just a great bonus every day. Well, that, that's I kind of think that way. So I like to be able to say, you know, this stuff I need to get it more quickly. You know, maybe you know I've got my water filter and my stove in a packet pocket on the outside that's easy to get to. So I agree with you. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed them, used them. Yeah, everyone. Because in picking this pack, I was picking those options. And there are there is some weight to adding zippers and separate pockets. Yeah. So, um, but I'm going to enjoy having the brain as well because I will use that for certain things. And there'll be segmenting you know, gear and things, which yeah. I think will ultimately allow me to get at things more quickly because I'll know where they are. Now, this one's a new one, isn't it? This is the AG. You have had the Osprey before. Um, so what is it about the AG? What is the difference in suspension? Yeah, you asked earlier if uh, I had new stuff or old stuff, and I kind of cheated it, uh, with the pack a little bit. I had the Osprey Atmos for a couple of years and did a number of trips with it. Uh, and really liked the pack just fine. 
Um, but when the AG came out, which is stands for anti gravity, which yeah. is you know a marketing logo or my motto, I should say, I really looked at it, and it got some spectacular reviews by users, and I was continually attracted to it, even though my Atmos was perfectly fine. <laughs> and so I eventually went in and you know walked around the store, put a lot of weight in there, tried it on, took it off, tried it on, walked around. And there's something that I find to be just, just elegant about the structure of the back support and the way it seamlessly blends into the hip belt that allows you to carry a weight, I think, in a very comfortable manner. In fact, I think it's so comfortable and more comfortable than my original Atmos that I can literally carry more weight with the same level of comfort. Good, good to know. Good, really good to know. Well, in fact, I'm looking at the, uh, the various reviews about this, and this is one, I can't remember where this one's from, but it says that one thing to watch out for is that snow can get inside of the back panel. <laughs> and as you're going in February, there's a good chance you're going to get some snow. So watch out for the snow inside the back, back panel. Okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, that's probably true for all Osprey, though, because one of their features is uh, creating this airflow. Yeah. By the way they sort of shape the pack, they have uh, a lot of air being able to flow between your back and the pack, yeah. which may not be as necessary in the wintertime, and I guess that's how snow might collect. But I think it's really effective in the warmer temperatures. Yeah, I, there's no doubt about it. Your pack is an important thing. It becomes part of you as well. I never thought it would. I always thought it would be a burden. But to me, it helped me with my balance. And when I sometimes had a lighter pack, my balance changed totally. It was really it was amazing to feel, actually. You know, when I did slap packing a couple of times, I was carrying 10, 15 pounds instead of my normal 35 or 40. And when you were going up certain, going up or down certain hills, you felt the difference on your back. And it wasn't always a good difference. Sometimes there's a certain, certain solid, solidity to having this big thing attached to your back, and you get used to it. That's interesting. One, one thing I don't think I see often enough or, or much at all uh, on websites or blogs is a comparison between the effectiveness of the suspension system with the amount of weight you can carry comfortably. And by what I, that I mean, some of these ultra light packs, they clearly are lighter than my pack, half the weight of yeah. my pack. Yeah. But they don't seem to me, and I've tried them on, um, not, I can't say I've given them the, the proper workout, sure. but they don't seem to me to carry the same amount of weight with the same level of comfort. And I think that in effect, what I'm doing is I'm adding two pounds to my pack, but I'm getting this very comfortable suspension system that allows me arguably to carry my 25 to 35 pounds in a manner that I think may be more comfortable than the 20 pounds that's being carried on one of the ultra lightweight packs. I, I totally understand that. And I think you're almost certainly right. They, 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 the reason they have anti-gravity is to make you be able to do that. And obviously there's a the, there's a slight trade-off where you have to. This has to be slightly heavier. But you're right. If you can carry it more efficiently, I can see there's a definite trade-off worth having. Well, I've made that decision, and I, I I'm comfortable with the decision. Um, I am really like the pack, cool. and uh, I have been to the extent that I have been concerned that I didn't give the ultralight packs enough consideration. I've been encouraged because I've run into a number of through hikers on my shakedown hikes and there is a remarkable number of Atmos AG packs out there. Yeah. I think it's probably one of the more popular it is yeah. through hiker packs. And in talking to those through hikers, uh, all of whom have had at least, you know, eight, nine hundred, if not a thousand or more miles on them, they were very satisfied with their choice and the Man, in which the pack had held up thus far. Cool. Well, before we move on to the sleeping uh, sleeping uh, bag, I've got a question for you from Bob Bates. So this is Bob's question. Let me just open this up a bit. Hang on a sec. It says, my question to Bruce, what is his one, maybe two, luxury items that he must have 
and uh, and what yeah what why what 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 must you take with you that you actually regard as a luxury? That's a good, very good question. And you know, you and I have talked about doing a whole episode on those last decisions. But I have <laughs> a, a number of items that are: should I take them? Should I not? And I think most of the time in the should I take them or should I not, it's a weight versus luxury decision. Of course. Um, so I think in a sense that's Bob's question, and um, the the most obvious one for me. If we talk about this, I do have eight or nine items, believe it or not, I'm still sort of debating about. <laughs> but they're not material to the ultimate decision. No. Um, and some of them, you know, even though I haven't decided, you know, I'm leaning strongly one way or another, and some are still a toss-up. But the, the one that comes to mind immediately uh, is my, my iPad. Yep. I think you could probably get through a hike with an iPhone that does all the things an iPad does. And uh, for nine or 10 ounces, that's not an insignificant amount of additional weight to bring along. I am leaning towards, strongly leaning towards taking the iPad, even though it's fairly weighty, because there are certain things that I think will ultimately be used enough and add to the comfort uh, that that'll help my mental state. And that, of course, as you know, will help me finish. Of course, yeah. So to me, I'll be use the iPad for journaling and reading books primarily. Yeah. That would be the two biggest things that uh, I, I'm thinking about using. I'll try to think of another item for Bob, too, while we're sitting here. <laughs> have, you got, have you got a waterproof cover for the iPad? I do not. That I will send you time. one. I took one with me, and it worked absolutely perfectly. It seals beautifully, so I'm going to send it to you. You can have that. Okay, well, that's good to know. I, I had, I've been been looking at the waterproof ones for the iPhone, knowing that that would be out more, but um, I'll look forward to that. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, now, the sleeping bag. Did you ever consider a quilt, or did you just go straight for a sleeping bag? Yeah, um, that's probably one of the – areas where I did the least amount of work. Uh, I did a bunch of work early on trying to find a good, effective sleeping bag and get one that was pretty lightweight. And so I have always felt comfortable using down. Um, I think we've talked before about my canoeing experience. Yes. And when you canoe, you, you need to know how to pack and keep things dry. And I've always thought I could keep my sleeping bag dry, which you know, with down, that's, you know, something you've got to be concerned about. <laughs> yes. Although they do have more and more of this dry down and treated down that um, apparently does pretty well, even if it gets a little wet. Right. Anyway, I decided early on I would get a lightweight, effective down bag. I did a fair bit of research. I ended up getting the Mountain Hardware Phantom 15. It's not cheap, is it? I looked no, at the price. Not. It's. It, I did get a nice sale. I think I got one hundred and twenty dollars off it, but it's a pretty pricey bag. Yeah. But it it is very light for its rating. Uh, it's well regarded, and I thought that uh, the investment would be worth it, considering how valuable it is and how much you're going to use it. Oh, it's critical to be warm, especially the time you're going as well. What degrees yeah. is it rated at? What temperatures is it rated yeah, at? The Phantom Fifteen, which means it's rated at fifteen. Right. And here's, here's another answer for Bob. The other, one of the other items on my maybe list is a liner right, to add five or 10 degrees to the bag. And again, I'm leaning towards taking that liner because being cold is just not really a great way to be. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely take a liner. The liner's lovely as well. They do, I think they're silk liners. I've got one I actually my toe cut a hole in it once but uh yeah uh the, the, I, I don't regard personally i don't regard it as a luxury item i i think that's a necessary thing as well because you really want to be warm in there you're going a very early time aren't you a little early yeah the, the silk liners are great for comfort and for cleanliness yes uh, they don't add a lot of warmth there is this sea to summit it's got a very nice liner called a reactor that they say will add about 20 degrees of warmth so wow. There's a couple of couple of levels, and that's the, that's where I'm still looking and debating. But I probably will end up with a liner 
to get me down to zero just in case we have you know a, a week or two of that kind of weather and you, you asked about the uh quilt and that's something that i don't feel like i gave enough consideration to um the more i thought about a quilt the more i talked to people the more i met some manufacturers i really started thinking the quilt's a pretty good idea there are some nice aspects of the quilt that were trying it started convincing me I should have given more thought to it. Um, but because I have a really good bag that I had really good experience with and it wasn't inexpensive, I decided that uh, I was not going to look any further. Well, I know we say it's your big three, but you, there's also a, a pad as well, isn't it? What have you done for your, your pad? Yeah, this is going to be probably a little uh, surprise or new to the listeners. So um, I've, I've actually tried to few different pads um i settled on a uh a climate oh did you Fatix five smaller company uh i met them at trail days so did i and very good value compared to some of the competitors in the market it really, really nice is value. i agree They've done some creative things with with their pads great people um i went with the five because it's more insulated in a in, in that it has a higher R rating. But I also had an opportunity this summer to go to the outdoor retailer show. Uh-huh. And I got really, really, really interested in uh, a brand new closed foam pad that Big Agnes is coming out with for the first time this month. Right. Because I kind of uh, sort of made a fuss about it and told them how interested I was in it. They're sending me one. Uh, I'll be maybe the first person out there on the trail oh. with this new pad. So it uh, it's closed foam and it has a very high R factor. It's kind of meant to be a bit of a mountaineering pad, but it's actually lighter than my other pads. And I like the R factor. There's a good chance that when I get to Virginia, I'll swap out and bring my climate because I really like it, it's very comfortable. But I'm very fascinated. At trial days, they, they, they let me lie down on it. It was, it was very comfortable, it surprised me how comfortable it was. And when I saw the price, it was vir- they were virtually giving it away. It's about 20 bucks off at the, tr- at the uh, at trial days, and it already wasn't terribly expensive. So I thought th- it was great. Are you going to be keeping, yeah, that, you, are you gonna be keeping the, that bag the whole time? Are you going to get another change out when it gets a bit warmer to another bag? You know me, I actually have a more of a three-season bag. Um, I do have the Phantom 40, the Mountain Hardware Phantom 40, <laughs> and I'm expecting to you know, use that uh, probably when I, you know, when I hit Pennsylvania, something like that. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is put put a pictures put pictures of all these in there and the names and links and stuff like that. Um, but that's your choices. You've got the you've got the big choices, and you're taking your iPad, for which I'm so pleased. And I will send you the uh, I'll send you the uh, waterproof thing, and it really worked well for me. Never got wet once, so uh, that's very that's useful. good. So you did you took an iPad? I took an iPad all the way. I, I actually sent it home in New Hampshire. Because I was I was starting to fall with some alarming regularity, and I thought I was going to smash it up at one <laughs> stage. Um, so I, I had to make do with just my phone. But it was really lovely to have the iPad. And I think that's a good choice, Bruce, to be taking one. If you you know you're not carrying a huge ton of weight, you've got your weight down pretty well. So I know I know an i an iPad will certainly add weight, but you know it's once again it's the added value for you. Then I think you'll enjoy it that much more. Yeah, that's I'm le- certainly leaning that way, and very, very likely was planning to take it. So, and, okay. and very likely to take the liner to add a little. Uh, yes, I, I definitely would do that. Yeah, I definitely do that yeah. for you. Yeah, okay, man. Well, uh, thanks for sharing those with us. I, I think we, I know we can do another gear program, obviously, um, in the next week or so, because you're not. It won't be very long before you actually leave. It's now the thirteenth. We're recording this, and you leave on the twenty. The twenty fourth. Not long now. <laughs> it's really not long it, now. <laughs> we are really counting it down. I think we might only have four or at most five more oh, podcasts dear. before I'm on the trail. Wow, looking forward to it. Okay, mate. Well, good talking to you, and I'll, we'll catch up again next week. Okay, very good, Steve. Thanks. Appreciate Cheers. It. Cheers. Bye. Cheers, Joe. So, 
Those are Bruce's big three. What do you think about his choices? We'd really like to know. By the way, I promised him my iPad waterproof cover. And now I can't find the bloody thing. I've got about five weeks to find it. And I'll let you know if it turns up. What an idiot. Once we'd finished recording, we were chatting later and I told Bruce that when you're on the trail for such an extended period of time, every item you have in your bag has to be the best that it can be for you. It doesn't matter if it's not the latest or greatest. It doesn't matter if it weighs six ounces more or less than a competing bit of gear. All that matters is that you are comfortable with it. You are the one who has to carry everything, so only your opinion matters. If you want a Walmart pack, then go for it. If it works for you, then that is all that matters. I've included pictures of Bruce's choices in the show notes, so make sure you take a look. As you heard, Bob Bates asked this week's question, so Bob, let me have your address and Trailtopia will send you your prize. Keep the questions coming. We've got plenty still to to ask Bruce, but uh, I'd love to hear some more. Got another five-star review. Matt and Rhonda tell me that we have produced another wonderful show. They even say that I'm engaging and knowledgeable. You should have seen me at the top of Springer nearly four years ago, Matt and Rhonda. I wasn't in the least bit knowledgeable, but like everyone else, I learned. Next week is another gear show. This is called the Winter Supplement, with an emphasis upon the additional gear that Bruce needs because he's leaving so crazy early. Man, it's going to be cold. And that is it for today. So Bruce and I will see you next week. 